Paul Giesler was born on June 15, 1895, in Westphalia, in the Prussian part of the German Empire. From 1924, he was a party speaker, then in 1929 a party district leader, or Ortsgruppenleiter, and joined the Saar in January 1931. In November 1933, Giesler was elected to the Reichstag, during these early days he served mainly in multiple Saar leadership posts, rising to the rank of Saar, Brigada Führer by April 20, 1934. Hitler's 45th birthday. During the night of the long knives he only narrowly avoided being arrested and executed. Brought up on charges before the Supreme Party Court, he was acquitted in April 1935. When World War II began, he served in the Polish and French campaigns. Starting in August 1941, Giesler took up important party functions again, with Martin Bormann's support. He became Gauleiter of Westphalia South on November 9, 1941, and a member of the Prussian State Council. Then on June 23, 1942, he was made acting Gauleiter of Munich Upper Bavaria during Adolf Wagner's illness, retaining his position in Westphalia South. Giesler was in command of two Gaus, until he turned over the Westphalia position to Albert Hoffmann on January 26, 1943. When Adolf Wagner died on April 12, 1944, Giesler was made permanent Gauleiter in Munich. After Ludwig Siebert's death on November 1, 1942, he was also appointed acting minister president of Bavaria. On November 16, 1942, he was appointed the Reich Defense Commissioner for both Gaus. On January 30, 1943 he was promoted to Saar Obergruppenführer. In Munich, Giesler was, known for speaking out against higher education for women, provoking student walkouts of his speeches, he was also known for his capture and defeat of the White Rose student resistance movement. In April 1945, he was appointed Reich Defense Commissioner, South and, in addition to his own Gore, was placed in charge of Gorswebier, Reichsgau Salzburg, Reichsgau Upper Danube and Reichsgau Tirol. Vrolberg. With help from SS units he brutally quelled their Freedom Action Bavaria, uprising under Captain Drive Ruprecht Gern Gross in Munich. Reflecting Giesler's fanatically loyal Nazi outlook, he was named Reichsminister for the Interior in Adolf Hitler's Will of Sunday, April 30, 1945, though he never had the chance to formally assume this post. As US forces approached, Giesler was reported to be planning the murder of the surviving inmates at Dachau concentration camp and several of its satellite camps in March 1945, on the authority of Ernst Colton Brunner, chief of the Reich Main Security Office. In August, 1946, in testimony given to the International Military Tribunal by Karl von Eberstein, he claimed he was ordered to use his influence with the commandant of Dachau to have 25,000 prisoners shot when the U.S. approached. If this couldn't be done, then Giesler, in his capacity as a Reich Defense Commissioner, would order the Luftwaffe to bomb the camp. Eberstein refused to order the shooting of the prisoners and also stated that it would be impossible to find any Luftwaffe commander to carry out the orders. Giesler said he would poison the prisoners. But, Eberstein claimed he stopped Giesler by getting an order from Himmler to simply surrender the camps. Giesler dismissed Eberstein on April 20, on orders of Martin Bormann for defeatism. During the last days of Nazi Germany, Giesler was behind the worst of the violence directed against, defeatists, and those seeking to surrender their districts without pointless destruction, the Penzberger, Morden Act, or Night of Penzberg Murder, being one of the best known incidents. On Tuesday, May 8, 1945, the day the Nazi Germany surrendered, Giesler, his wife and their children committed suicide, Giesler was 49. A local doctor practicing in the town of Stangas certified Giesler's death that same day, and he was buried in the cemetery in Berchtesgaden on May 10, 1940. Paul